Alright everyone, welcome here to a Han patch analysis of the patch that hit today, February 2nd, uh, version 4.9.1. So before we start the analysis, I just want to do a reminder here. Um, if you guys like the content and uh, you appreciate uh, the, the content we're putting out, please hit that subscribe button. It will really help moving forward to help my channel grow. I really appreciate that. So let's get started here with the patch analysis. We had a patch hit today. Um, we're going to go through uh, the gist of everything and pros and cons of all of the changes. So right off the bat, we have new content, new loading screens have been rotated into the game. Cool. Uh, and art backgrounds rotated out. We are delighted to have art pieces in our game. Mm -hmm. Okay, new behemoth avatar, exo behemoth. Path and Rhapsody, base avatars and icons have been re reverted to their base versions. So uh, last patch, we had the uh, default models changed and it looks like they have been reverted. Han China models and avatars are now available for free in the store. So we have some uh, different models available. Okay, so that's the cosmetic stuff. Now we're going to get into more of the design and balance areas of the patch notes. So we have design, staff of the master, and legacy changes. So first one in order here is blacksmith. So chaotic flames, this is the ultimate. Staff of the Master effect changed to the pre-existing version. Mana cost reduced from 33% of max mana to 20% max mana. Chance to cast Fireball, Flaming Hammer, or Frenzy when auto-attacking increased from 10% to 15%. So what we have here is when you auto-attack with the staff on the Blacksmith, you have a 5% greater chance to cast and multicast on your primary abilities. And the ultimate version, the R, that you can activate, you no longer need to have 33% of your total mana, you can, you only are required to have 20%. So um, a big drawback to the Staff of the Master pre-existing version was 33% was very demanding um, because Blacksmith does have very high mana cost abilities on its own right. You would need to build, um, you would need to build a decently sized mana pool with mana regen in addition to the Staff of the Master, which would require a lot of farm and time for the Staff to really become effective. So the 33% requirement was just simply too high. It made Staff of the Master not really worth, um, or as valuable of a pickup as something else could have been. So it really deterred the pickup of Staff of the Master. With 20% max mana, it's a 13% reduction. You only need one fifth of your mana pool now versus one third. So a big drastic change here, although it only looks like a small number value, it is going to be quite significant. And I think Staff of the Master on the Blacksmith will be much better um, than it was in the previous version. So a nice buff to Blacksmith Staff of the Master, plus the passive buff of the extra 5% chance there. So Blacksmith getting a nice Staff buff um, here in the newest patch. We have Flint Beast, which Staff of the Master visuals have been implemented. Okay, so nothing, nothing really, just visual effects, no actual balance with how um, anything interacts. Monkey King, Staff of the Master visuals have been implemented on all avatars. Credit to Red Bear for his assistance on HD Monkey King and Queen of Fools avatar. Okay, so again, same as the one above. Puppet Master, Voodoo Puppet, this is the ultimate Staff of Master effect change to pre existing damage multiplier reduced. 150, 175, 200 to 130, 155, and 180 uh, percent. Okay, so each uh, level got a 20 percent damage multiplier reduction. So we're going to see less burst on the ultimate. Now uh, we don't see a whole lot of staff of the master on puppet master, um, but this change here is going to reflect in some balance later down the patch notes so we will get to this change a little bit more later when we talk about what um, what's happening with the puppet master 
Solstice 7 Master Visuals have been implemented. Okay, so again, no actual balance as far as how it functions, just visual effects. Witch Slayer Silver Bullet. The ultimate 7 Master effect changed to pre-existing. Magic damage increased from 715, 925 to 1100 to... So the level 1 stays the same. The level 2 goes up by 20, uh, 25 damage. And the level 3 goes up by 50 damage. So this is more so a minor change to the staff of the master for witch slayer's bullet and it's just a small damage increase on the levels two and level three the level one remains unchanged but in reality this doesn't matter too much because you generally have a staff uh later on in the game when you're already level 11 or 16. credits device a series for the visual effects to staff and master awesome thank you to will Okay, so some more cosmetic stuff here. We're going to go through this stuff a little bit quicker, I think, than the balance stuff. So HUD has been reverted to its state prior to patch 4.9. Music tracks have been reverted. Christmas is over, thus the Forest of Caldivar and Midwars maps have reverted to its state prior. After some reconsider reconsideration, keeping the UI in from February to April is not suitable. Priority level of name colors in which they display in a chat channel have been readjusted to be more suitable in terms of their overall value. The most notable change is the gold shield color. Players who use this name color appear above all other non-volunteer, non-staff name colors for their help to get hunt started. Okay. User interface. Region selection checkboxes are now visible in the Play Now screen for the new UI without having to press the Regions button. Okay, so if we hit Play Now... We'll just close this for a second. We can see the regions up here. So right now I would not be able to queue because I have not checked any regions. Okay, so you can now see what regions you're queuing before you hit the play now button. I actually really like that. That's a good change because sometimes you would just forget what regions you were queuing. And if you don't queue the same region all the time, like me, sometimes I queue Europe, sometimes I queue uh, US servers, you might forget what you're queuing. Let's change it to visibility on what regions the user is queuing for before actually queuing up for game exactly so there you go region selection for all players will be reset when the patch occurs by default no regions will be selected as opposed to having all of them selected excellent so now you won't accidentally queue on a server you do not want to play on change will force players to select the regions they should drastically alleviate issues with players playing on servers where they have high paying okay so force of caldivar Congor buff reward movement speed reward bonus movement speed per charge reduced from 15 to 12 so you get three buff choices from Congor. you can choose attributes you can choose uh i believe it's four percent damage to your hero or you can choose 15 movement speed and a lot of the times i will say that movement speed is arguably the best choice for uh the majority of heroes um sometimes uh you will want to take stats sometimes you will want to take damage but most of the time you would take movement speed and if you got four congor buffs you would have the equivalent of i believe it's steam boots i believe steam boots gives i'm just going to double check that really quickly but i believe steam boots gives 60 movement speed so 60 movement speed steam boots is a very generic uh movement speed item that most players would have and four of the congor stacks uh would give you a free steam boot so you could sell your steam boots uh in the late game stage with four congor stacks and you'd essentially not have uh, not have any missing movement speed but also if you did keep them you would be getting closer and closer to being hasted passively with some other items tacked on something like a dawnbringer for example that gives movement speed the list goes on but the point is uh it was very easy to stack movement speed with the congors so this change uh reducing from 15 to 12 is going to be significant because you will need one more congor uh you will need a fifth congor to go back to that 60 value which was the old four uh congor kills so four congor kills of old will now yield or will now be five congor kills on the current patch to get to that 60 uh movement speed uh requirement there to where you equ equivalent to a steam boot value so it'll it'll slowly add up throughout the course of the game the 
three movement speed reduction. It does look kind of minor, but the uh, the difference will definitely be there. So a little bit of a balance on the Kongor buffs as uh, this will possibly deter people from taking movement speed a little bit more and give uh, the other two attributes, which are stats and the 4% damage, uh, a little bit more of a consideration moving forward. So that's, that's always good to see. We don't want to just see... Um, Everyone auto picking movement speed so that everyone can be running around semi hasted uh, in the late game. So that's a good change. Neutral camp slightly reduced the creep max travel distance of the leftmost easy camp or leftmost legion easy camp. Um, okay, I think this is to fix some kind of a creep pulling uh, leash range interaction. So this is a like a map balance style of thing um, with the creep camps or just one creep camp. Werebeast Enchanter, so this is a neutral creep that you could uh, you could dominate with something like a Whispering Helm or take over with an Ophelia or a Parasite for example. Farsight's Clear Vision, so this is the spell that the Werebeast Enchanter casts. Clear Vision radius reduced from 1800 to 1200. So this minion if you were to dominate it and use it, it, it is very powerful. Um, you get a lot of vision from the activate spell. And it lingers in the area for quite some time. So this radius reduction of 600 just kind of balances the ability out a little bit to kind of not give as much information um, as it was previously giving. Um, now, with that being said, not a lot of people would use this mechanic, but it was still very powerful nonetheless. And uh, I do think it's a healthy change because I think having something on demand that gives you uh, a very large radius uh, information for an extended period of time is very powerful. So I do feel like lowering this radius down uh, by... 600 will make that a little bit less um, of a free information tool. So I like this change. That's that's a good one. Uh, excuse me, one second. Okay. So ranked pick, banning phase duration increased from 20 seconds to 30 seconds. Okay. So you get 10 more seconds to ban. Um, heroes, this is in um, normal matchmaking mode when you queue up. You play ranked pick, and the game starts, and you have, or you used to have 20 seconds to ban, uh, I believe it's you get to ban two heroes, uh, each player. And then, uh, I think it's what, six heroes total from all 10 players gets banned, but now you have thir uh, 10 more seconds. So you have 30 seconds total. This will increase the uh, increase the banning uh, timer once you get into a match. Wait time between end of banning phase and start of picking phase reduced from five seconds to three seconds. Okay, so a little bit of timer reduction on the downtime there to compensate for the extra banning time. I like I like the extra banning time. Uh, this is uh, although it makes the uh, pick screen a little bit longer. Um, I think it is nice because. When you get into a game, a lot of the times people want to call their lanes, discuss what strategies you want to do, and sometimes you just need a little bit more time to kind of go through the pre-match stage of the game. So this is a little small change, but nice one. Matchmaking player color order is now fully randomized in matchmaking and champions of New Earth games. In other words, the player with the highest MMR in matchmaking and champions of New Earth games will no longer always be in the pink or blue player slot. Okay, so this one, I gotta say from my own personal experience, this is a great change. Um, typically, what happens is the highest rated person in the match or in your team will typically play mid or carry. And you generally don't want to pick those roles early because they are too susceptible to counterpicking. So generally, from a strategical standpoint, you want to try to pick supports and uh, 
supports and the roamers or uh, offlaners, the junglers, those kinds of things earlier in the picks and allow for the higher priority picks, which are the carry in the mid, to not be allowed to ca be counterpicked. So um, I like this change a lot. I think it's going to be really healthy for uh, for the uh, matchmaking games moving forward. And uh, we'll have to see how it uh, how it influences the uh, the picking uh, phase for matchmaking games. But I like it. I think it's a good change. And I'm glad that uh, when I ever I am the highest rated player in the game, I won't have to always pick my hero first. Um, so that's very very nice. General ranged creep aggro range reduced from 800 to 750. So. Range creep aggro. This is when you are. Uh, what when this really comes into play the most is when you are playing a two versus one in the short lane. You're playing against an off laner whose main objective is to get uh, the opposing side to lose the lane control so he can get the lane closer to his tower to farm and get more experience um, safely. And what would happen is the support would have a hard time boxing out the enemy offlaner due to the range creep drawing aggro very easily so if you just stand in the creep wave and force the support to harass you in the creeps you would very easily draw aggro and get the opposing side to lose lane control this would kind of mess with the lane equilibrium and thus get you the lane control in the offlane so it was actually quite easy um to lose the lane control this is a very small change it's only 50 aggro range it's not very very much but it is something and it will make um, boxing out suicides slightly easier um, I don't know if this will be a very very impactful change but it is a small change and it is uh, going to make it a little bit easier to um, try to box out offlaners Do you think that support against a suicide needed some help, aka buff? Um, that's a tough one to answer. Um, uh, right now supports are kind of strong, I would say, because there's so many ways for supports to get gold right now and kind of translate into the game. But um, offline does have those pull camps. They do kind of force the supports to spend resources and either block them or body block them or uh not allow them to kind of get those pulls off for free but i think this uh this will help the suicide uh you know it will help uh it'll help with keeping suicides in check a little bit nicer <clears throat> Why is it I can't? Alright, anyway. Uh, hero, uh, hero balance now. So we have Adrenaline here. Sorry. Uh, adrenaline. Primary attribute changed from Agility to Strength. Okay, so Adrenaline is getting a attribute change here. So we, we know that Adrenaline, he got changed in the last patch. So it's been a little over a month now, I believe. Or actually, it's been, what, two months? I believe the last patch was beginning of December. So it's been about two months now. And Adrenaline, he has an arena-like ultimate with that Death's Halo now. And he kind of locks all of his allies and enemies in, in, a, in a ring. And he's in the midst of everything. So... Changing him to a strength hero, I think, is a is a good thing because he's going to be up in front of everyone. He's going to be uh, receiving focus fire. I believe it's if that uh, if adrenaline dies, the arena ends early. Um, so there's no way to really get out of that arena. So you want to either kill adrenaline or try to uh, survive that without taking uh, with with taking as little damage as possible. But uh, I think changing him to strength makes a lot of sense. 
uh, because if he's agility and he's in the midst of a whole bunch of heroes locking them down, he just won't really survive that long. He won't have the tankiness that he really needs to, to kind of achieve what he's wanting to do here. So we're going to have base armor increased, uh, almost a full armor. Base strength increased from 20 to 24. Strength growth per level increased from 2 to 2.5. Base agility reduced, so in compensation for him not being agility anymore. <clears throat> agility growth per level reduced from 2.4 to 1.6. Base intelligence increased, so he's getting a little bit extra intelligence. Growth per level from 1.5 to 1.8. Okay, so having all of his stats redistributed due to being changed from an agility to a strength hero and also getting some extra armor. So... Um, Agility heroes, as you will probably already know, gain armor much easier as it's their primary attribute. But now that he's a strength hero, he will not gain as much agility as well due to the growth being reduced here by almost one agility per level. This will equate to roughly 25 agility, a little bit less. Of course, it's not a full one there, but uh, this base armor adjustment will give him um, a little bit of armor to compensate for now being a strength hero. So we have Shard Blast here. This is the first ability. Bonus damage is now based on strength. Okay, so that makes sense. He's now a strength hero. Mana cost reduced. So he has much significant mana cost reduction here. But the level 4 almost remains unchanged. So this is mostly an early game uh, mana cost reduction here. So he's going to have a lot more usage of the Shard Blast. Uh, he also got, what was it, 2 intelligence base increase so he's getting mana cost reduction and intelligence increase base magic damage increase so the level one is the same two three and four gets slightly increased bonus magic damage based on your primary attribute increase okay so he's getting a 10 percent at all levels uh increased damage based on his primary attribute which is strength touch radius Increase from 92. Okay, so this makes it a little bit easier to uh, land the shard blasts. Cooldown is now reduced to 0.5 seconds when hitting two or more enemy heroes with this ability. Okay, so this, if you're able to line up the shard blast on two or more enemies, it will reduce the cooldown. Uh, pretty cool. So that should make this ability a lot stronger, especially in the early game where the mana cost got reduced. And then once you start leveling it, you'll see a little bit of a damage increase plus the percentage uh, addition based on his strength. Rush now behaves like a regular dash charge with pathing. ID does not force the destination to be at the very end, like Dark Lady's Charging Strikes. No longer cuts trees. So you cannot cut trees anymore with Rush. It's a big change, actually used to be able to uh, kind of go through juke uh, you know go through terrain not up and down cliffs but you you would be able to go and destroy trees and kind of change the pathing that you would want to go through cooldown reduced here so one second cooldown reduction or yeah one second cooldown reduction at all levels range rescaled from 700 to these values so at the early two levels it is lower than it used to be but then he actually gets more range on his rush no longer has a dread stack mechanic magic damage change from 20 plus 10 magic damage per dread strike consumed to so this is what it is now it is a flat damage amount plus percentage of your strength so again it synergizes with the shard blast the more strength that you have the more damage your abilities are going to do so you're going to want to be building into strength items to increase your shard blast and rush damage Ember Shard, Tether Duration changed from 1.8, 2.2, 2.63 to 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5. So this Tether is getting um, increased at all levels, it looks like. Self State Duration increased from 4 seconds to 8 seconds. Now refreshes Attack Cooldown on Cast. Okay. So if you auto attack, you use your Ember Shard and then you can attack again as it refreshes your auto attack nifty mechanic there enemies now also receive a 25 percent movement speed slow in addition to being restrained after being pulled so this is going to have a lot of utility to it it's going to restrain and slow so similar to something like prisoner's shackle it's going to apply a slow and a restraint strain movement speed slow state duration change from one second to 
0 0.8, 1 0.2, 1 0.6, 2. So early level, uh, not a big, uh, not a big uh, slow, only less than one second. But once it gets maxed, up, maxed out, it is a two second slow. So something that comes to mind would be like a Myrmidon carp. It slows you on impact for a very short duration, and then the slow wears off. So it'll have uh, a little bit of utility to it with a restrain, but not super, super strong or hard to play against in the early game. But as it gets leveled up, it'll have some uh, decent utility to the spell. Death's Halo. Duration is reduced by one second when adrenaline receives cumulative damage equal to 25% of his max health from 20 percent no longer grants an agility bonus for real hero trapped okay that makes sense because he's no longer agility now grants four six eight bonus strength two bonus attack damage and one bonus armor per real hero trapped times two for enemy heroes okay so let's say you catch three enemies um in your death's halo you would get 24 strength and 3 armor and 6 damage. The attack damage, I guess, is not too big of a deal. I guess the bonus strength at the level 16. So if you catch 3 heroes, you're getting 24 strength. If you catch 4 heroes, that's what, 32 strength? That's a uh, Axe of the Malphite. uh this should be oh 25 strength i am way off all right pardon my math here so actually if you catch three heroes it's almost equivalent to an axe of the mouth five which is pretty strong actually that's that's a lot of bonus strength um uh, and you got to keep in consideration what items you already have as well so that can that can definitely add up and could see something like uh very tanky adrenaline builds with like barbed armors or something um locking people in those uh in those uh, arenas the death's halo magic armor bonus per real hero caught increased from 1 to 1.5 okay so he also gets magic armor so he's going to get pretty tanky now when he uses the arena and that's going to become a really strong lockdown tool i feel like because you're going to have to uh you're going to have two options you're going to have to focus adrenaline to make that arena last uh, uh last less duration or you're going to have to be able to tank up and survive in that arena uh while it's in place Adrenaline was dependent on too many attributes, and too many options could have been taken to address this. Changing from an agility hero to a strength hero was the option that was chosen. With the proper readjustments, he now only requires damage and mana sustained to be effective. Okay. Adrenaline was also still not surviving nearly as much as expected against multiple opponents during this halo, so he received significant durability buffs while it's active. Okay. Um, unfortunately, I can't really contest to this information because I never tried him out myself on the last patch, but I was told he was very, very underperforming and not too, uh, like, he wasn't really doing what he was supposed to be doing. So, hopefully these changes will make him a much more significant of a, uh, of a team fighter and scaler throughout the game. Okay, so that was, uh, I don't want to call that a rework, because that's definitely not a rework, but definitely a big change to Adrenaline. So he is now a strength hero, and he got all his um, abilities readjusted to fit uh, beco uh, becoming a strength hero now. Alright, so moving forward, we have Armadon. Armadillo, this is the passive. Spine burst damage threshold when taking damage to the rear, reduced from 150 damage to 130. So... You will start to spine with 20 damage less damage taken from the rear. Okay, so this this change will just make Armadon spine more. I think this is fine. Um, a while back we had a we had seen Armadon have like a, a big peak, or not peak, but he had a big play increase. He was performing very well. He had a nerf, and now he's getting a, a buff once again. So we could possibly see some more Armadon. 
uh, due to this uh, small number value changer on the armadillo. Servers are up, yes. Times two is only for armor, yes. The magic armor does not get the times two buff. That's how I understand it from the patch notes. And yes, I am reading the chat while, I, while we do the analysis. <clears throat> All right, so now we have artillery. LRM now deals 0.8 damage to non-hero units. So artillery got a big buff last patch. We saw a big play rate increase in artillery. Very, very strong. Um, his big weakness, or actually, I'll just read this here. Artillery's weakness of farming was alleviated a little bit too well. A slight reduction in damage dealt against non-hero units should rebalance his performance out, was out once again. So exactly what it says here. Artillery had a big weakness of farming. The farming weakness was basically removed, especially with items like Lightbrand into Dawnbringer, which is a very traditional artillery item. Uh, on the last patch, the searing effect just allowing him to really farm uh, very comfortably. That was his biggest weakness. That was removed. And he more or less has always been very good of a hero killer. Um, it was just getting the farm and the items to kind of continue that throughout the game that he was really suffering prior to the last patch. So last patch, he was just very strong with that uh, farming weakness removed. So this is a slight reduction here to his farming um, as he won't be able to clear creep waves with LRMs and stacked jungle camps as efficiently. Now this in conjunction with what is going to be changed with the searing modifier later down as we get down to the items, that will also uh, help to reduce the farming speed of artillery. So not mentioned here, but we will talk about that later. Next on the list is Calamity, Dragon's Path. This is the second ability that dragons flying around her that you can change in and out. Magic damage per dragon reduced. So 25, 50, 70, 95 to 20, 45, 65, 90. So five damage at all levels. It looks minor, but five damage uh, definitely will be a little bit noticeable. This will... Uh, this will help to keep her damage in laning phase and in the early to mid game in check. Um, I believe a while back she got mana cost increase as well. So there is a pretty decent mana cost on those dragons. So uh, to help keep them from becoming too obnoxious in those early laning phase stages. <clears throat> Funeral Pyre. This is the third ability where you steal stats and you get a bonus auto attack when it's off cooldown agility state agility gain state on self duration reduced from 1.75 to 1.25 times the original state duration so the agility uh, no longer lasts for 1.75 times it now will last 1.25 times so a big uh, duration reduction here damage dealt by the extra attack instance now deals 50, 60, 70, 80% of Calamity's attack damage instead of 100%. So, uh, you used to get a free second attack that would do full damage. Uh, so basically, you'd be doing double damage every every time that the Funeral Pirate was off cooldown. Pretty, pretty strong to have a free 100% uh, damage hit. And now it will be it's much, much weaker. Still strong at the 80%, but not nearly as strong as the 100%. So Calamity has seen a recent increase in play rate with great success, particularly in tournament play. This I can agree to. She has been pick or blind band material for uh, a couple of cycles now, or a couple of months. Most of her damage is coming from Funeral Pirate and Dragon's Path, so small nerfs to these abilities should make it more bearable to deal with her in the laning phase and during mid-game. There we go. We talked about the laning phase. We talked about her transition into mid game. This will alleviate some of those power spikes that uh, Calamity was having where she would get too out of control. <clears throat> so next is Defiler Unholy Expulsion. This is the ultimate spirit movement speed and max movement speed increased from 400, 450, 500 to 650. So at all levels of Unholy Expulsion, the spirits will move at 650 movement speed. So this will allow the spirits to be able to chase 
much, much easier. This is a big increase in movement speed, jumping from 400 to 650, um, especially at the early stages of the game where movement speed is much, much lower. Um, this change will be a little bit less noticeable towards the late game stages, but in the early game, this will be a big buff to Defiler's ability to chase down foes with her spirits. So a nice change there for Defiler. Draconis. Draconis base movement speed reduced from 300 to 290, so he gets 10 movement speed base reduction here. Draconic defense. Cooldown increased from 60, 55, 50, 45 seconds to 75, 70, 65, 60 seconds. So he is getting uh, a... 15 second increase on his draconic defense at all levels so these two nerfs here are going to reduce draconis's mobility um, when we think of a hero like draconis before i talk about the fiery barrage we think about he farms very very fast and he's everywhere on the map he's defending towers he's in your face with volcano it feels like with the combination of TP and Draconic Defense also being able to be refreshed when you use the Volcano, so you can use this essentially twice once you, when, whenever you have your ultimate up. Uh, this hero just has so much mobility. He can get from lane to lane, from jungle to lane, very, very efficiently. And while he's doing that, he is farming faster than any other hero in the game. So this movement speed reduction will very greatly reduce his performance. Um, as it will not allow him to just be everywhere all the time. So it's not going to stop him from being a powerful hero. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying it will stop his mobility from being able to be uh, essentially in two places very, very quickly, repeatedly. So good nerfs to his high mobility. Now the Fiery Barrage, base physical damage per second change from 6, 12, 18, 24 to 5, 10, 15, 20. So this will slow down the stack or creep clearing power that Draconis has. He just farms very, very fast. Uh, he farms faster actually when the creeps are stacked. So he, in the early stages when you are farming single camps, he farms much slower than when you double and triple stack the camps. That's when the fire spreads. But uh, one damage at the level one, not going to be too, too much. But it'll start to be picked up at the later levels where it is uh, a couple more damage per second changed. So these changes should mitigate Draconis' farming speed in the jungle early on and give him a little bit more of a weakness early on. Isn't the movement speed change for Defiler Ghost only? Yes. The Defiler... These are the ghosts, not the, it is not the hero, that is just the ghosts. I believe I said that. Okay, so that was Draconis. <clears throat> Drunken Master, base agility increase from 12 to 14. Okay, small agility increase here. Drink, max charges increased from 6, 24, 32, 40 to 18, 27, 36, 45. Total max evasion and stun debuff duration reduction increased from these numbers to these numbers. So he's getting a little bit more stun and debuff duration reduction. In addition to existing bonuses, each drink charge now also grants a 1.5 chance to critically strike for 1.5 times attack damage. So you're getting 1.5% chance per drink charge. So essentially you can have at level 4, you can have 45 uh, you're going to have 45 charges. Each drink charge also gives 1.5. That, that's actually pretty strong. You're going to have a really high chance of getting a crit. So, Drunken Master is going to be outputting more damage. He's going to be critting. Healing from the natural expiration of a drunk charge increases from 6 health to 7 health. Okay, so drink charges are going to heal you slightly more. 3 point strike. Physical damage reduced. Okay, so 50 damage less level 1, 100 damage, uh, and then 100 damage again. Drunken Master has historically been too focused on being bursty and being built as a glass cannon. With the iterations of Drunken Master in 2018 to 2020, the major complaint was that the 3-point strike required little to no skill to deal an immaculate amount of burst damage to his targets during the early to mid game. That I can agree to. 
Uh, recent changes have addressed this by making it take a little bit more skill to achieve said burst and bring back the healthy mechanics of the original drink ability, though the hero has been underperforming. Okay, so again, agreed to that. He got his drink mecha mechanic back. He was underperforming uh, quite a bit. To address all these concerns and address the hero's performance, a decent amount of damage has been shifted from his ultimate and placed into his drink mechanic. Okay, so this makes it less about just bursting and more about using the drink mechanic. Maintaining a high number of drink charges allow him to function as a traditional carry slash semi-carry, granting him a multitude of defensive and offensive buffs while still allowing him to a choice to drink for offense, defense, and using his skills for mobility damage while reducing the number of drink charges on himself. So there you go. He will be more focused on his drink mechanic now and less focused on his ultimate, which is just doing in people up in the air for huge amounts of damage. So good direction for the hero, and hopefully that will bring his numbers uh, back up to a reasonable um, a reasonable value because he was underperforming as the um uh, analysis there said in the bullet points okay moving forward we have fade reflection this is the ultimate now re reduces the target's healing received and re health regeneration by 20 40 60 percent for four seconds this small change brings back some legacy effects onto reflection so uh, a quality of life i'll call it a quality of life change here for fade she now uh, reduces healing and health regeneration when she auto attacks out of her reflection to the target for four seconds um i don't think this change is going to be extremely significant but um against heroes with high health regeneration something that comes to mind would be like a lord sulforus or a solomon um it will reduce their healing for uh, a minor duration while they are um, auto attacked by that reflection so I don't think this is a extremely significant change, but it will be it will be a, uh, a buff nonetheless to the reflection. Golden Veil, Perch and Plunge. While perched on a tree, Perch no longer counts as an ability cast for certain sources, e.g., power supply. This change is more of a buck fix, but it has been it, but it has more implications on Golden Veil's performance in lane. So you're jumping from tree to tree, your opponent can't see you, but they notice, hey. I just got a power supply charge. Somebody's nearby. No longer will that be the case. So the power supply uh, will not get a charge when you use perch or plunge, or perch more specifically. So that's just a laning uh, performance for uh, Golden Veil. Icor, transfusion cast effect type change from magic to superior magic. This allows Icor to properly latch onto allies and enemies that have magic immunity. Uh, this is a big buff to Icor. Um, now you can guarantee that your transfusion does what it's supposed to do, um, as you can make sure that that uh, can be useful to allies when they have shrunken head on so this will make him much stronger um, as the game progresses into the mid and late game stages your ally uses his shrunken head to avoid crowd control in a team fight and you as the icor can jump to him and transfuse that damage and debuffs to yourself very very uh very very nice change to icor that will make him much much better um, as the game progresses Keeper of the Forest, Nature's Guidance, this is the Q ability. Camouflage will now only apply its root state on enemies when attacking out of stealth if the attacker is a non-illusion Keeper of the Forest hero, i.e. not his minions or other ally heroes. So this is a nerf to Keeper's invisibility. You can no longer put, keep, uh, you, can, you can still use it on an ally, but you cannot use it on an ally to root said enemy. So if you want to use the root mechanic, you can only root from yourself. And I think that that is, um, I think it's a good mechanic because you can, you can give the invis to allies in the later game stages. Let's take a look here at the cooldown. Where's Keeper of the Forest? He's here somewhere. So we have a 10 second cooldown and it lasts for 60 seconds. Essentially, if you were patient enough, you can put the invis on your whole team 
it would take some time, but you can put it on more than one person. We'll just say two or three people and you can have everybody rooting people. So it, it's a little bit too strong. Um, now you can only have your self being the keeper of the forest doing the rooting and the root also is getting a nerf here root duration reduced from 1.2 1.62 2.4 to 1.2 1.4 1.6 1.8 so only increasing by 0.2 seconds um, per level you can put it on four pet trees and root the enemy for 15 seconds. That's true. You could all you used to be able to root from your minions, which it says right here, not his minions. So I talked about that. You can't root, can't put the invis on allies or your minions. So I think this was just an overtuned mechanic that the hero had going for him. I don't think um, it, it is a nerf, but I don't think it's going to hurt his performance all that much. I think. Um, the fact that he can still have that on-demand route and he can re invis himself and do it a second time on top of the ultimate. You can still root three times. It's still very, very strong. So to say that this nerf here makes Keeper of the Forest much, much weaker, I think would be, um, I think it would be a false uh, accusation, but it is a nerf nonetheless, much less utility on the spell, but still very, very good. Um, for setting up ganks with the with the root mechanic there. Okay, so we'll move on to the next one. Kraken base intelligence increased from 16 to 18 turn rate, increased from 360 to 700 degrees per second. That's almost twice the turn rate. So he's getting a big buff here on his turn rate, getting some minor intelligence buffs. So he'll have a much easier time using his full combo when he hits level six. The Q into wr um, a lot of the times you would not have the full mana um to do everything when you got level six and i think that that was a bit of an issue for kraken as you would need um, some kind of mana source the bottle the uh, steam boots the power supply something to give you that little bit of extra missing mana um, so now he'll have two extra starting intelligence. Very nice buff to crack in there. Tsunami charge travel speed increased from 850 to 1000. So the charge will impact much quicker. If you use some roll number tweaks to crack and to keep up with the meta. There you go. So he's getting some nice little quality of life changes and the extra int to help him with his combo uh, in the early game. Monkey King. Strength growth per level increased from 1.7 to 2. Base Armor increased from 2.8 to 3.2. Small survivability buff to Monkey King to keep up with the meta. So Monkey King, very, very uh, fragile hero. You typically tend to build him with tanky style items. The hero uh, naturally deals quite a bit of damage with just his skill set and the ability to combo, re-engage, combo again is kind of how the playstyle of Monkey King plays out. So some... Uh, number buffs to increase his survivability as it says here I like it it's good it'll help make monkey king a little bit more durable does fade buff make it a hero to pick against solo or to counter symbol for example not necessarily no because you you would have to time that correctly you'd have to be in position when they use those things uh, specifically the symbol at the right time which I don't think that that's really reliable so to answer your question I would say no okay we have moon queen here multi strike bounce radius increased from 450 to 500 okay so the bounces are a little bit have a little bit more Range on them. Lunar Glow Moon Queen receives 1.5 times the damage bonus from this ability. Okay, so Moon Queen getting some damage added to her. Moon Queen currently does not have a good enough reason to be picked over Forsaken Archer at the moment. These changes should help her deal more overall damage than Forsaken Archer if she is able to attack her foes. I don't know if I necessarily agree with this one. I feel like Moon Queen is very strong. I feel like it's just getting to the point where she's strong because she... Um, she does have a weakness of early game, but she is very, very powerful late game. She is 
one of the better carries uh, to have fully slotted going into that late game. This one I don't know if I necessarily agree with, but uh, we'll see. We'll see if this has a big change um, moving forward. More access, more access. Cooldown increased from 1.5 seconds to 1.25 seconds to 1.5. The increased number of access was a sufficient buff to more access on its own. As a result, the cooldown and stability is being reverted to its original values. So yeah, so Maraxis got an axe buff. I believe last patch the hero was already performing very, very well. His big weakness is his early game and his farming mechanic getting to that portal key. But once he gets there, he kind of starts to come online. Um, he's not really known for being much of a farmer, more of a setting up team fights with that quake stun and the portal key combination. But uh, as it says here, the axe buff was sufficient. Uh, the number of axes was sufficient. Nitro, Ballistic Mana Cost reduced from 15 to 12. Blast Off Mana Cost reduced by 5 per level. So this, this is really just a small numbers change. Uh, this is possibly pretty significant. 3 Mana Cost per Q or Orb Walk uh, effect per cast. Um, this will add up. So every, every 5 times you would auto attack, you would get like an extra auto attack. Because 3, it would cost 3 less. Um, it's it's something. It's significant. I don't know how big of a change this actually is, but this would definitely help his laning uh, phase. I think to be be even more dominant than he possibly was currently. A few minor buffs to Nitro were given, as she is slightly underperforming. She should be fine where she is after these changes. Okay. Nomad, strength growth per level increased from 1.8 to 2, agility growth per level increased from 2.8 to 3, intelligence growth per level increased from 2 to 2.2. Okay, so Nomad's getting stat buffs across the board. Nomad is, uh, I want to say he's not really a meta hero right now. He's just, he's just simply too weak. I think he just dies too fast. I think he... Uh, I think he needs too many items to really come online in this current meta uh, as a carry hero. Um, so I think the stat buff per level it, it is minor, of course, but it, everything helps. And I think this will help make him a little bit more uh, durable and viable. Now we have a change here to edge counter. This is the ultimate on expiration. Now grants 20, 25, 30% damage reduction for the next five seconds. This state propagates to illusions. He spawns while active. So if you manage to pull off a successful edge counter, you will get a damage reduction for five seconds. I, I really like this change. I feel like it's kind of supplements the whole Nomad being not very durable of a, of a hero. And this kind of rewards you for landing an edge counter. Um, so you can go into those fights and do, do your damage and not, not be really... Uh, threaten to blow up like instantly because your your item progression is typical very glass cannon style. Uh, you're you're very squishy and it's just very hard to go into er early and mid game team fights. So these changes should give no just the amount of durability he needs without making him too frustrating to deal with. I agree. I like the I like the uh, buff here to the ultimate. I think it's very rewarding if you're able to land that edge counter. <clears throat> Ophelia, Nature's Wrath. Cast range reduced from 800 to 600. Duration reduced from 6 seconds to 5 seconds. So, Ophelia, uh, she's very, very strong right now. Arguably, she's been strong for most of her history in Haunt. Um, a very high skill, high reward style of hero. Very, very strong for tournament play. Um, this nerf here to her first ability the slow goes back a little bit more towards her legacy where it had much less cast range and this will it'll have one second reduction on its duration so a lot of the times what happens is you you set up a gank with ophelia 
you either veil draw or you just run into your enemy and you have 800 cast range that is so so much 800 cast range it's so easy to catch your opponent with a slow and then follow it up with your minions now you have to be more or less in attack range 600 range on that cast range of the nature's wrath um to get that slow on them this will very very much uh reduce the effectiveness of nature's wrath we could possibly see ophelia is going back to maxing the uh, Ophelia's Judgment, which is the W spell, over something like the Nature's Wrath because it will just not be as impactful in the early game, but the damage amplification will still be uh, significant throughout the mid and late game stages of the game. So I would not be surprised to see Ophelia's leveling the Judgment over the, excuse me, the Nature's Wrath as a uh, as a chain share, but um, this will realign the. Uh, ability for Ophelia to catch her foes before catching them with her minions. So now with this change, you're going to more or less have to catch uh, the target you want to go for with the minions versus just getting a for free slow effect and then the rest is self-explanatory. Command, so this is her take over creeps ability, cast range reduced from 900 to 600. Okay, so she has to be closer to the target she wants to take over. Cooldown increase from 8 seconds to 15 seconds. Ophelia has been picked and banned more frequently in competitive matches, so she is receiving a few nerfs. She will still be able to dominate the early game, but just does it a little less effectively now. Okay, so I believe there's a charge system on the command. Um, this cooldown here just kind of uh, limits how fast the charge is built up for you to... Uh, be able to take over creeps i could i might actually be wrong about that i can't remember if there's still a charge system or not um but eight seconds to 15 seconds is a big big change so uh you won't be able to switch out your creeps as quickly so you have to be a little bit more uh you have to manage your creeps uh much much better now you have to be more conscious of not letting them die so quickly. Okay, uh, next in line here is Puppet Master. We talked a little bit about Puppet Master with the Staff of the Master section, and now we're going to talk about the actual changes here to the Puppet Master. Base movement speed reduced from 300 to 295. Okay, so he gets a mobility nerf here of 5 movement speed. Whiplash no longer passively grants attack speed. So Puppet got a a big buff in his whiplash last patch where he got passive attack speed per level this in conjunction with elder parasite was making him very very strong arguably one of the best heroes in the game it was just outputting too much damage uh for more or less for nothing this will uh revert him back to uh only having the crit and no not having the attack speed buff on the whiplash that will significantly uh, make the whiplash uh, weaker. Voodoo Puppet. So this one is a big change. The Voodoo Puppet's max health increased from 500, 700, 900 to 500, 750, 1000. So it gets more HP at the levels 2 and 3. But here's the downside. Damage multiplier reduced from these values to 110, 120, 130. So a much, uh, much smaller damage multiplier. This will limit the burst of the Voodoo Puppet, and in compensation, it will get a cooldown change here to 130, 110, 1, uh, 120, 110. So 20, 15, 10 seconds per the three levels. Leash range is back uh, increased to 1500 now, so you have longer leash range on the Puppet to deal the damage. And now passively grants Puppet Master 15, 30, 45 attack speed. So we removed the attack speed from Whiplash and we added attack speed to Voodoo Puppet. Um, it doesn't say here, but the old attack speed was 10, 20, 30, 40. And now you get 15, 30, 45. So at the level 16, you're actually getting more attack speed than you were getting previously, but you have to wait longer to get it. So you're not getting it at the level seven or the early earlier level marks depending on how you want to skill but typically you would max the whiplash by level seven so you would get that 40 attack speed very very early now you get it with 45 at the level 16 mark so there is some compensation there you are getting attack speed back but in the early game it is going to be a bit less 
So Puppet Master, he's going to be less focused on burst damage. The Voodoo Puppet will not have as much burst damage. It will still deal quite a lot of damage, but not uh, nearly as much as it was before. And you will get more attack speed at the level 16 mark to, to be right-clicking uh, faster for uh, for more damage. So Puppet Master's burst damage as a carry with ganking tools has been too high throughout the history of Han. With the latest free passive bonus attack speed on Whiplash and Elder Repair Site being a new meta item pickup for Puppet Master, his burst damage potential has been dampened in favor of having a bit more sustained damage over time compared to before. Voodoo Puppet is gradually becoming more of what it was originally designed for, a damage proxy for when the target goes out of range, and a proxy to apply crowd control to the target without being near the target. It can still be used to burst a target down at close range, but it's just less effective at doing so. Elder Parasite will also be receiving a minor nerf in conjunction with this change, as the item in general has been proven to be a little too powerful after its recent changes. These combined changes should put Puppet Master in a better state than before. Okay, so I think we covered everything to do with Puppet Master pretty well here. And we will move on to Rhapsody Disco Inferno. This is the second spell. Magic damage dealt to enemies reduced from 20, 30, 40, 50 to 18, 27, 36, 45. Healing per second applied to allies reduced from 13, 22, 31, 40 to 10, 18, 26, 34. So the damage the Disco Inferno is doing will deal less and the healing will also heal less. So Rhapsody got a big increase uh, power spike last patch. It was overperforming as I believe this is what that says. Rhapsody has been performing well since her changes in the previous patch. Her numbers on Disco Inferno were proven to be a tad high, so they are being reduced slightly to compensate. So there you have it, the number's going to be readjusted here to bring her back in line. Uh, pretty straightforward. <clears throat> Shadow Blade. Strength, Agility, Intelligence, Growth per level increase from 1.5 to 1.8. Okay, so he's getting stat buffs across the board. Gargantuan's Blast. Gargantuan form no longer changes base attack time. Okay, so a bit of a revert back to his old uh, function of his Q ability. Faint Siphon attack damage drain now applies against enemy non-player controlled units with 0 0.5 times the original value. So that's a pretty good change. He's getting back some of his damage when he jumps um, Kongor or neutral creeps. He will be able to steal some attack damage, but he won't be able to get the full value, which was kind of making him broken in the old version of him. So I like this. This gives him back some damage from the uh, faint siphon. Siphon soul, the first attack against an enemy hero in this form, deals a bonus 20, 30, 40, 50 magic damage and applies a 0 0.9, 1, 1.1, 1 1.2 second stun. Okay, so he now has a way to stop TPs. Um, it is a minor stun, not very, very long duration but uh a buff nonetheless he gets some more damage as well in the first hit this is only uh first attack after looking at shadow blade's performance part of his kit has been reverted more closely to its legacy form while still allowing shadow blade to leverage factors such as the attack damage steal from ancients and Kong without them being too good in these situations Soul Sight now also provides more support-oriented bonuses to allow Shadow Blade to have some capabilities as a support hero when, under, when underfarmed or when underperforming. Soul Sight also gained a bit more laning utility to help Shadow Blade perform better in this phase. Okay, so again, pretty straightforward stuff. He's getting some buffs across the board. Hopefully this brings him back to his legacy version. Shell Shock now has a 0 0.3 second delay after initial activation to prevent accidental activation. Okay, can't just smash your Rolling Thunder key and insta-cancel it on accident. Succubus Mesmerized, this is her sleep. Cast range rescaled from 625 to these values, so it has more range at level 4, but less range at levels 1, 2, and 3. This will make her laning phase less annoying. These changes... Makes Agibus have a little more reward for leveling Mesmerize while reducing its cast range to a more reasonable amount during the laning phase. Boom. There you go. 
War Beast. Metamorphosis while active. Max movement speed for your own units increased from 550 to 550, 600, 650. Okay, so War Beast is getting movement speed increase on his ultimate at levels 2 and 3. Uh, I think this is a good change. Of course, I'm going to say that because I'm a War Beast player, but the reality is uh, War Beast kind of struggles in the current meta right now. He just simply, there is just simply too much movement speed in the game between items like Dawnbringer. Uh, the list goes on as well as the Congor buffs, which we talked about up at the very top of the patch analysis. Um, the Congor buffs getting three movement speed per Congor kill reduction. So uh, just too much movement speed in the game. Uh, War Beast kind of lacking in performance due to that factor, and this will help to remedy one of his bigger weaknesses, which is actually chasing people down, because uh, he's supposed to be faster than his opponent with that metamorphosis, but a lot of the times it feels like he is not. So, a very nice change uh, for War Beast uh, at the level 2 and 3 of the ultimate. Witch Slayer, base movement speed increased from 290 to 295, base intelligence increased from 23 to 25, intelligence growth per level reduced from 3 to 2.8, projectile speed increased from 9, ooh, projectile speed increased to 1 to 1100. So this is, uh, this is laning phase stuff, uh, trying to push Witch Slayer to become more of a solo laner versus a support giving him extra movement speed and base intelligence, as well as a faster projectile on his attack speed. Um, power drain, cooldown reduced to... That's pretty nice, actually. The level 1 went down by 8 seconds, 6, then 4, then 2. So the early levels of power drain, uh, this will allow free, more frequent usage of power drain in laning phase and early game. But a very nice change, actually, to the power drain. Silver bullet magic damage change from 650, 750, 850 to 550, 750, 950. So here we have a really big change. Last patch, the silver bullet was just very overtuned at level 1. 650 damage at level 6 plus the stun was just a really, really over the top. Uh, 550 is still going to be very strong, but uh, not even close to as strong as 650 was. 750 going to be the same, but the level 3 is actually going to be 950. So Witch Slayer going to be outputting the damage at the level 3. Very nice changes across the board for Witch Slayer. The nerf here to the level 1 was just very warranted. This was just very, very strong. Witch Slayer is still not great in a competitive environment. These changes aim to keep him more relevant in the meta while reducing the polarizing performance of Silver Bullet slightly while maintaining it as a net buff prior to patch 4.9. So there you go. We're, uh, these buffs to Witch Slayer across the board, trying to push him as more of a solo lane style of hero. Zemplar Fractal Field Trigger Radius for Zemplar's Illusion increased from 900 to 1200. Wall of Mirrors Trigger Radius for Zemplar's Illusions increased from 900 to 1200. Zemplar Wall of Mirrors also received some bug fixes mentioned in the bug fixes and optimization section of the patch notes. While Indirect, which indirectly nerfs into an appropriate power level. So this hero was actually um, disabled, is the word I'm looking for. He was disabled for quite a while as he was actually bugged, and uh, these fixes will allow him to get back to doing what he's supposed to be doing without doing them uh, not the way they're supposed to be working. So that's good. We will now be able to play Zemplar again. <clears throat> So these are just quality of life uh, radius increase on the uh, illusion triggers. Zephyr, windshield. The evasion mechanic on this ability not only functions against ranged attackers. This prevents melee units from missing if they attack at the edge of Zephyr's hurt box. And Zephyr is currently moving away from an enemy melee unit. So this is a quality of life change. The windshield, as it says, is supposed to only block ranged hits. And now melees will properly... Um, have true strike or they won't be able to miss um, if essentially on Zephyr's windshield so that's a good change so that is all of the hero balance for the patch uh, we will now enter into the uh, we will now enter into the item balance section of the patch
where we will uh, we'll go over the item changes now. So the first one in order is barbed armor. Before I talk about what got changed, uh, barbed was just really overtuned this patch. We saw even in tournament play, we saw teams buying four and five barbed armors. Pretty much every hero buying barbed armor. So that alone is kind of self-explanatory to saying that the item was really not where it was supposed to be. This item is really supposed to be designed for heroes that want to tank, uh, go into the fights and tank those uh, and, and deal return damage. Uh, uh, so, you know, the fact that people were buying barbed armor on every hero was just a little bit overtuned. So now we're going to see what got changed. Duration reduced from 5 seconds to 4 seconds. So one second reduction here. Return damage type is now the same as the received damage type. So it is no longer uh, true damage, which I believe is what it was last patch. Return damage percentage increased from 65 to 80%. So in compensation, it got a 15% damage amplification increase. Cooldown increased from 30 to 40 seconds. So you will not have the barbed armor um, available as frequent. The return damage type change makes it so that the wielder of barbed armor will not reduce the amount of damage returned to their attacker based on the wield wielder's armor magic armor value. This was counter synergy and was why barbed armor was considered a bad item in the past. Instead, the damage will not be returned as uh, will not be returned of the appropriate type, so that the return damage will be mitigated by the appropriate armor type of the attacker and not the wielder of the barbed armor. Over all these changes allow appropriate counterplay from the attacker's perspective without the effect of barbed armor being too strong while still enabling barbed armor to do its job and scale appropriately as the game goes on. Okay, so there you have it. We're gonna have the uh, damage type change to received uh, damage and the percentage going up to 80% with less duration and lower, uh, longer cooldown. Okay, so that's barbed armor. <clears throat> ah, one second. Elder Parasite. So this was another item that was overtuned last patch. We saw um, Whispering Helm see a big decrease in uh, in pickup and a big increase for, uh, on the side of Elder Parasite in its counterpart. <laughs> Passive attack damage bonus reduced from 10 to 5. Damage amplification for damage received while the state is active increased from 12 to 15%. Passive bonus attack speed reduced from 20 to 15. Recipe cost increased from 600 to 800. So nerfs across the board. Passive damage cut in half. 3% more damage amplification, which is what it used to be uh, in the previous patch prior. Uh, passive attack speed. So 5 less passive attack speed. So this will, item will more or less be uh, based on its activate form and less on what the passive bonuses are. These are all passive effects uh, listed up here. And uh, if we take a quick look at the Elder Parasite, it says here, Crazed effects, 15% movement speed, 90 attack speed, 20% lifestyle, 15% damage taken. So that is where we're going to see... Uh, the reasons for the Elder Parasite. We're going to see mostly the activation aspects as uh, a lot of these numbers got readjusted as well as the cost of the item, 200 gold more. Elder Parasite is supposed to be a mid-game, high-risk, high-reward item for auto-attack carries and has been readjusted accordingly to fill this role. It was just a tad too good in the previous patch. Okay. So now we move on to Light Brand, Frozen Light, Searing Light, Dawnbringer, and Grimoire Power. The Searing State is no longer applied in a 300 radius. So this, this Searing uh, applif application excuse me, uh, was very, very powerful. Uh, this would allow the, uh, the dot effect to just translate onto creeps very easily for quick, efficient farming. And that app uh, application will no longer uh, be applied in the radius. We see Grimoire of Power, debuff reduction and stun reduction state duration reduced from 1 second to 0 0.6 seconds. So uh, almost half the duration here. 
total cost increased from 700 to 1100 gold so it's getting a 400 gold increase on the recipe here so a much uh much more gold to complete the item it can no longer be activated while perplexed or under a forced order effect e.g. Legionnaire's Taunt. This is a big, big change for Grimora Power. Uh, it was very, very overtuned last patch. You could pretty much use it to get out of anything outside of blue border effects, which were stuff like Chronosphere or uh, single target hold disable ultimates like Succubus, the Succubus hold. Um, so outside of a few uh, heroes with certain abilities, the Grimoire of Power was just a get out of jail free. You couldn't even buy Health Flower to disable the item. Now you will be able to perplex uh, where Grimoire of Power will not be um, able to be activated. Uh, same with Legionnaire. You can now force the attack function on a hero with Grimoire and they can no longer get out of that taunt feature. Cooldown increase from 70 seconds to 90 seconds becomes 72 seconds after his own cooldown reduction mechanic. So 20 seconds increase there, uh, which nets it to 72 seconds. Now applies an activation modifier state for two seconds, which prevents other activation modifiers from being applied while active. Now use an activation modifier. E I.e. this cannot be active at the same time as shrunken head or void talisman. Okay, so you cannot use your Grimoire power and then instantly shrunken head. And as I pointed out, be... Uh, getting this get out of jail free card to any kind of initiation on, onto uh, a hero with the Grimoire power. So a much needed change as well. Because uh, essentially when you had a Grimoire and a Shrunken, uh, as I said, outside of those blue border effects like Chronosphere and those types of abilities, if those weren't present, if you, you could just Grimoire power anything and Shrunken and just escape for free. It was just very, very stale. There was no counterplay to it very very broken um, you can no longer do uh, that combination of grimoire and shrunken grimoire power has proven to be an incredibly viable item pickup option in the game compared to frostal skull and geometer's bane finally in fact it is likely a little too good right now as this item also allows you to farm better compared to its counterparts because of this a cost increase is perfectly justified the active effect has been nerfed a little bit to make sure that it still does what it should do Allow the user to cast at least one final ability after breaking CC without the duration being too long, as well as preventing items like Shrunken Head from being used to guarantee an escape. So there you go. We 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 talked about <clears throat> we talked about all of the uh, overtuned perks of the Grimoire of Power. So these nerfs will bring the item uh, more down in line with some of the other items. Iron Stone can now be purchased at the outpost. That's uh that's cool can get the Ion Stone in the middle of the jungle. Iron Shield, deflection chance against enemy heroes reduced from 100 to 70%. That's a pretty big change, actually. Iron Shield, a very powerful early game laning phase pickup. Um, typically, we'd see this on agility melee heroes, but we, we have seen the item even picked up on melee strength heroes in the landing phase just to really have that damage ref, uh, deflection guaranteed that 100%. But now being at the 70%, I don't think we're going to see um, players opting to upgrade their shield into an iron shield unless they are an agility hero now. This change allows the item to still be a strong pickup on a melee agility hero in the landing phase, but does not enable their traits to be too effective. Orb of Zamos and Grave Locket now only generate 0.25 times bonus gold when a non-player controlled neutral creep is killed by the corresponding synchronized hero. This item was simply not intended to synergize well with heroes that clear neutral creeps throughout the game. Okay, so we got a nerf here to the free gold items. Pegasus Boots now prioritizes teleporting to ally heroes before prioritizing other targets. Okay, so this is more of a uh, more of a fix to how the item is intended to work. So that's good. Power supply no longer has a recipe, i.e., it is a standalone item now. Okay, this is a this is a pretty big change to get used to. Now it costs two hundred gold. 
No longer passively grants bonus strength, agility, or intelligence. Max charges reduced from 15 to 10 can now be purchased at the outpost. Okay, so that actually changes quite a bit. You don't have to upgrade your crushing claw to minor totems with a recipe into a power supply. You can just buy the standalone item for 200 gold, and it gives you that effect of gaining health and mana when players cast spells, uh, when you activate it. And you can now buy it at the outpost, so you can get it, you can get it uh, without being at the base or using the courier. Sacrificial stone, new component build up, power supply, major totem recipe, 850 gold, increases healing done from, or increased healing done adjusted from 10% to 15% health, restored per charge, increased from 10 to 12. So, uh, Sackstone getting a 5% healing increase. That's a very nice change. I think this item was underutilized. I think this will give more incentive to players to buy or uh, upgrade their power supply item to Sacrificial Stone, and the 5% healing will be a little bit more enticing there. Power supply now functions like the old mana battery. It was too cost efficient for the stats it provided at the unit gold price point, and there was a need for the item to be at a low cost for its act functionality to prevent changing the item hockey order once again power supply and sacrificial stone were properly adjusted rather than reintroducing mana battery failed rot now applies to the user even if they are invulnerable addresses a corner case when responding at the fountain right away so sometimes there would be uh, you would Respawn, you would use a Veiled Rot, and the Veiled Rot would not activate, and this was more or less a bug, so this is now fixed, which is the corner case here. That's good. A lot of the times this would happen to me, and my Veiled Rot would be wasted, and I would be very sad. So, people don't have to be sad anymore. Void Talisman, recipe cost increased from 960 to 1160, total cost increased from 15 to 1700 gold. So, supports and whatnot cannot get that Void Talisman as fast anymore you need 200 more gold and it's mostly bundled onto the recipe so you have to get that uh, effect slower passive strength agility and uh, intelligence bonus reduced from six to five so you get a one stat reduction there while white talisman is active your hero deals 25 percent less damage okay that's a big one actually so you can no longer <clears throat> buy a void on heroes like let's just give an example of a torturer you're dealing tons of AoE damage, but you don't want to take, you don't want to man up on a hero doing physical damage to you. Let's just say a Berserker, and you have your Impalement and your Torment going. Uh, now you cannot get that Void Talisman to just sit there untouched for, what's it, four seconds with that Void effect. Uh, now you will be doing 25% less damage overall. That is a big, big deal. Um, I don't know if I necessarily agree with that change. I think we're going to have to let that one play out and see how it uh, how it ends up working. But what this means to me when I see this, this 25% less damage, is Void Talisman is now going to be more or less focused on being a defensive item for heroes trying to make an escape rather than heroes uh, trying to play aggressively and try to use the... Uh, physical immunity effect uh, in their favor towards netting themselves kills. So Void Talisman now carries a little bit more of a penalty when used, as well as it being less efficient of an item when picked up. It should be still accessible enough to support heroes while reducing the damage output of certain heroes while active. So there you go. It will no longer be as strong for manning up and turning with magic damage type effects. Um, when you activate it, it is more going to be more so going to be used as a defensive style of item moving forward. So I don't know if I necessarily like this change, but we're going to have to wait and see um, see the effectiveness because 25% is quite a lot of a damage reduction here. Uh, matchmaking map old uh, mode rank pick. Mid wars, hero band, single draft, bug fixes. I don't think we need to talk about bug fixes. User interface. If you decline to do an update, you will no longer be able to log in. This is an issue where players may be unable to join a game or crash in the middle of the game if they choose not to update the game prior to playing. 
The server name is now displayed on the match stats screen. Remove the Facebook stream button from the old UI. Fix the compatize, compatize button in the old UI so that it is only enabled when a replay is selected from the list. Fix the gift button in the Han Star so that it transitions to the correct UI window. Um, okay, these are just hero bug stuff. Alchemist Wallace Tooltip now mentions the charge timer is frozen while your hero is dead. Portal key when taking damage is now manually set to 3 seconds, probably if you have more power in your inventory. Okay, so that sacrifice of midwar is now probably removes the boosted effect when your hero does. Okay, so that's going to do it here. We covered all of the patch uh, changes here in version 4.9.1, so that will conclude the patch analysis that was actually quite long that was about almost an hour and a half actually i didn't expect to take that long doing the patch analysis but uh we went through everything pretty in depth here we talked about all the changes and how uh how they should be affecting the game moving forward and what was uh what what was the uh changes from the uh previous patch so that's going to do it here for the patch analysis of version 4.9.1 and again i just want to do a reminder uh if you have not subscribed on the youtube channel please i would appreciate if you like and enjoy the content to please subscribe um i think we're currently at around 235 or something subscribers um if we can get to like 250 or even 300 subscribers, I'm really excited to do some jungle educationals in the in the near future. I know I mentioned this um, about a month or two ago, and I apologize for not getting around to doing it, but I am looking to do that very, very soon in the future. I want to do some jungle educationals and guides um, so that players who want to uh, get better on those heroes can can learn some stuff about them that maybe they didn't know. Um, but yeah, would appreciate subscribes. Um, but that will do it here for the patch analysis of version 4.9.1.